Welcome to the Gospel Road. Another day. Not really sure where my mind's going. You just kind of, I started and then boom, blank. <laughs> oh, I actually said thump this to some people today. It's like, weird, another day of living a Hollywood movie. Almost surreal. Even more interesting, a uh, guy I work with, before all this happened in the States, he had just got done watching Outbreak on Netflix. And of course, I'm noticing that when I go to Hulu and Netflix, there's a lot of virus-type movies or zombie I don't know, is it like a trend? I always joke at this point that I'm waiting for the zombies to show up. I don't know. <laughs> it's just crazy. Today we're going to look at Psalms 91, though. Let's, uh, let's look at this. Hopefully you're staying safe, staying sane. It's one of the things I'm telling a lot of, talking to a lot of friends, because they're sitting at home and not really sure what to do. They're kind of, they're tired of being cooped up. In fact, my birthday is right around the corner, and not really going to do much for that. I really do not do much with it anyway, but even more so. <laughs> Just kind of weird. Anyway, Psalm 91 says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand but it will not come near you. You will look out, you will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will tremble under, trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I deliver him. I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Psalms 91. That's what we're looking at today on the Gospel Road. And those of you like me who grew up in church, we've heard this a lot. This is, you know, the, the protection of God when you're going through something. And I've heard this a lot lately with the COVID-19 coronavirus, however you're going to label that. People throwing this out a lot both at work and through uh, social media and other means. And it's true. It's that trust. It's that trust in God that he is going to protect you. And, and again, whatever his will is in your life. I mean, I really have no clue what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen later today. No clue what his plan is for me. Because whatever his plan is now, things may change because he has something in mind. But at the same time, you have to think about this when God is being our protector. Remember, I always kind of use this as that motivator, as you're trying to be a better person and to help others. You know, how are you protecting your family? How are you being smart and protecting your coworkers? Of course, we're hearing a lot lately that being smart is you need to confine yourself because that is sharing love. Okay, I get that. But at the same time, with your knowledge or what or your ability, 
how are you helping someone that is in need? I mean, I'm hearing a lot right now of people losing their jobs. And we also are hearing a lot how people are not able to find toilet paper. And they're out. And people are buying it. And they're not able to find any. I mean, there's lots of ways to think about being that and trying to help people in their time of need. You know, helping them when they're trying to shelter themselves, shelter their family. And when I know at least where I am here in Iowa, a lot of people are having the fits because they have not put the shelter in place like many other states. I think three-fourths of the country are in the shelter in place right now, only leaving for essentials and things like that. Otherwise, stay at home. And being in radio, as many of you know, that have listened over the years, I mean, that's one of the essential places because we're trying to get all the information out to you and trying to kind of help you stay as calm as possible to keep your mind balanced, which it's not easy. I've had, I don't, I'm not sure how many conversations with people today that they're, they're just kind of getting lost. They're not sure how to feel. They're not sure where to turn. They're not sure what's going to happen. I said, this is one of those things that are out of our control. It's nothing that we really know what's going to happen. All we can do is use our mind and be responsible the best we can and do the best we can to protect us, to protect our families, to protect those that we work with, which I know a lot are working from home. It's almost, I think, become pretty close to mandatory in many businesses around here. I know for us and the other stations that I work at, we're pretty much programming only. A couple of them I'm actually out for a while because they said no part-timers in the building which is fine. I completely get it. But it's protecting each other. It's protecting those that you're responsible for in many different ways. Now, I'm sure we're hearing a lot of other ways that you're seeing greed make its way through, like the toilet paper and other things in the store because people are going and buying and kind of going crazy. And I'm sure we're also hearing some greed from businesses. I've actually heard someone say that a place that they work, they're making the comment that, well, this is nothing. This is no big deal. I've got bills to pay, and I need to worry about that. I'm not going to shut down. So you're being told to shut down or to kind of be smart about this, but you're choosing to not take that responsibility and go, yeah, sorry, you guys have to come to work every day. But again, there's the other side of that. And I talked about this yesterday. This is not, I'm not sure what the right decision is. And I certainly do not want to be the one that has to make this decision in any of the ways. You know, what the country needs to do, what this needs to happen, how that goes through. Because no matter how we look at it, I mean, we are starting to hear cancellations of events that are happening later in the year. Not even now. I mean, we're talking 90 days from now, six months from now, that because they're not able to get a lot of the footwork done, they have to cancel it now. They can't sign the contracts. They're not able to do what it is that they need to do to make that event happen. Once we get through this, there's going to be fallout. There's no way around it. And we're seeing fallout now, and we're going to see it for a while. Again, not saying I have an answer, because I certainly don't. But the answer that I can only say is, is what am I doing to, to protect me, to protect my family, to, to do the best I can, to, to help others, to try and keep that calm, which is not easy. I have the conversations every day of people just, those that were keeping the level head and now they're just starting to lose it because they're not sure what's going to happen. I know a lot of people that are very much control freaks, and this is something that's completely out of their control, and they are losing their mind. Not sure what is going to happen next. Being stuck at home, and they have no other way to do this. Having issues at home, trying to work from home because things are not working like they should, and nobody having answers to help them to figure out how to make this work because there's no answers because they've not been in this situation before. They've not dealt with this. So they cannot give an answer to figure out how to do that. 
It's not easy. It's for me, you know where I stand. I'm putting my trust in God. But then at the same time, because of what I do and people that I deal with, there's a lot that put their trust in me. The same for you when you're dealing with family and coworkers that put their trust in you. How are you being that rock for them? You know, God's being that rock for me. How am I pushing that through and carrying that on to be a rock for someone else that's not really sure how to handle what they're doing? It's not easy. We're in a different time. As I always say, read this. What does it say to you? How does it speak to you? Psalm 91. Thank you. For listening to the Gospel Road. Have a great day. God bless.